Good evening. I'm Paul. This is Dave. Welcome to Cast Talk. I am a uh, beer enthusiast and drinker, and Dave here is all those things plus a home brewer and a certified beer judge. And this evening we would like to talk to you about Vanilla Porter from Breckenridge Brewery. Now, to be honest with you, I picked up this beer because I was at the bar a couple nights ago, and even though it's February, they still had the Breckenridge Brewery Christmas, which was an amazing beer, to be honest with you. So I'm kind of looking forward to giving this a go. The last beer we did was a porter that had coffee in it as well as vanilla, so hopefully I'll like this one a lot better. Yeah, it's an interesting comparison. I like being able to do uh, two beers back-to-back -back that are very similar. If you're following the channel, we just did a Four Peaks. Cool Beans. Cool Beans, which was a vanilla porter that had some coffee notes in it. <clears throat> this is a vanilla porter that doesn't have coffee in it, or at least says it doesn't. Well, it doesn't really say it does, so it's a little bit higher alcohol. Yeah, this is... It's interesting to see. What is this, 10.9% APV, whereas the last one was 8.2. So this will definitely uh, warm you up on a chilly evening. Yeah, yeah, and definitely the kind of style of, well, actually, you know what? I don't know where you got that number because this says 5.4. Does it? Their website's at 10.9. Yeah, that must be some sort of special, special brew or something. So I'm assuming that, so this is going to be a little lighter in the alcohol, but still probably a significant increase from a lot of your light lagers that you would find out there. Uh, you know, 5.4 is better because you can enjoy more of them before you're face down in the gutter. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I love comparison styles like this. It gives us an opportunity to kind of develop a little bit of palette for the style and then get a good idea of like, well, which one would I like better and why would I like it better? Yes, I, I do agree with that. So generally, um, some of the things that I really like, I mean, I like porters on a general basis. They tend to be a lot more malty, uh, a lot more malt focused. They're not on the bitter side. I think this one's 28 IBUs. Yes. Yeah. So from a bittering standpoint, it's not on the very bitter side. So if you're not a big fan of bitter beers, this should not be something that um, that you dislike because of that. The um, So I'm expecting something to be a little bit more malty, a little bit more sweet. You know, the fact that it's got the vanilla character to it is definitely one of those kind of things that enhances, you know, the character to it. Well, I'm looking forward to giving it a go. So let's crack yeah, it open. Let's take a look at it. So generally, one of the things, um, I'm going to be a little bit partisan, mainly because I've recently bought a home up in Colorado, and that is where my uh, beautiful and wonderful wife lives uh, at the moment. Say all the nice things about her. <laughs> the most amazing person in the world to me. So I'm a big fan of Colorado, generally. So if you know what Breckenridge is, it's up in snowy part of Colorado. Uh, it is a ski town. We also happen to live in a ski town up in Colorado and quite enjoyed up there. I don't know if it's going to be as good. we have this good a beer up there, though. I haven't quite done the reviews of all the beers that are at our local breweries. Those are to come. And maybe we'll do some live episodes uh, when we're up there. Maybe I can get Paul up into the snow. It's kind of <laughs> a little bit of a desert rat. Snow is not going to happen with me. But anyway, back to the important thing, which is the beer. The head on this one is much, much nicer than the last one, and I do like that. Dave's beer is a little bit warmer than mine, so it's going to be uh, not quite so foamy. Noticeably, I'm going to keep the light on here. If you see, there's a little bit of rubiness to it on the outsides. So if you know, like, your brown beers will get a little bit red, but they generally brown, a little bit brown head to them. No. It seems to dissipate fairly quick. Well, yours is also a little warmer. Yeah, mine's a little bit warmer. I wish it was a little bit more kind of moussey. Um, yeah, but that one's pretty. Yeah, but it so still has a good... Temperature does matter in your beer, ladies and gentlemen. I will 100% say that. Some beers are better warmer, some beers are better colder, but, you know, it is what it is. I really didn't pick up a whole lot of vanilla on this one. Yeah, I'm not either. And I'm not picking up as much. The malt is definitely there, though. 
Yeah, not as much as I was expecting. Now, a lot of times your porters will be a little bit weaker than your stouts. They're not as pronounced, so they're a little bit more watered down. Yeah, this one is a thinner beer than the last one and definitely thinner than a stout. This is going to be about, about like a uh, IPA as far as your mouthfeel. The smell, I'm picking up a little bit of the maltiness. I'm picking up a lot of it, to be honest. It's, it's blatantly there. Can I smell your beer? Yeah. I wonder if it smells different because it's cold. Um, I, I think I'm picking up less maltiness than I was out of the other one. The other one had a little bit more maltiness to it. Yeah. Comparatively. I can still smell it. And in fact, I think the warmer has a little bit more smell than yours. The taste, though, I like it. The taste. Yeah, it's good. I'm not really picking up a lot of vanilla, though. Yeah, I'm not. I would prefer to get more vanilla out of this, but it's, I am it's a good vanilla. order. I am getting the vanilla, but it has some malt character to it that's a little bit a step above the last one that I have. Yeah. So the last one that we had, which was the Four Peaks Cool Beans, I really liked. And I think that if you're a stout fan, it's a definite like, oh, you must try this because it's a really good stepping stone towards some other style beers if that's kind of the beer that you like. This I'm seeing a little bit more like the style yeah, this is more than porter. I'm expecting it to be. It tastes a lot more like a normal porter. Would. Yeah, with a porter, it's got that malty character to it that you would expect out of a porter with a little bit of vanilla in it, which just kind of smooths out, kind of slicks your tongue a little bit. Not a very dry beer either. It's not a fizzy beer. It's not as sweet no. as the other one, but not in a bad way. Even though I like sweet beers, I like the balance to this. This almost would be easier to drink, and it could be because it's a little bit less alcohol, but I could see having a six-pack of this, while the other one I could see... Maybe having a couple and being like, oh, yeah. that's probably enough for me at this point. Time to turn uh, turn to a different flavor. Yeah, but this is smoother. It's a little bit more like a beer I could settle down to and to continue like, yeah, I'll take another one. I'll take another one and not have to think about like, let me try something else. Yeah, this, so, is, this is definitely a uh, beer you could sit down and play cards or sit in the sauna or mm -hmm. whatever Absolutely. and kill, kill four or five of them. When we look at Colorado, some of the – we'll say godfathers of brewing, come from the area of um, well, they, Colorado. I can think of maybe three or four books that I read that are all they, Colorado people. Yeah, they, uh, they've they been doing this uh, according to their website since 1990. And they actually moved from Breckenridge to uh, Littleton in order to get more space for their brewery. So... Mm -hmm. I'm sure they probably still have a tasting room up in Breckenridge, being the namesake of the beer. Oh, I'm sure they do. I'm just saying the the brewery itself is in Littleton, as far as I can tell from their website. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, this is a this is a good beer, and I personally do like the smell and the look of it, and I do like the fact that it's actually a bit on the thinner side for a heavy style beer. So that way we know like. You could just enjoy it a little bit longer is what I'm trying to say. You don't, you're not going to find yourself getting full or bloated off of it. So I'm absolutely gonna, quite enjoyable. I'm going to say overall presentation. I'm going to put it a little bit ahead of the other, um, the beer that we just did yeah. with the four peaks one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump it up, you know, probably not a huge amount because I really did wish it had a little bit more maltiness. Mine smells a little bit more maltier than yours just because it's a little bit warmer. But um, I'm going to go ahead and say seven and a half. It's, it's about where I am at with the presentation. Oh, the pen is dying. Don't let the pen die. We won't be able to keep records. I'm going to say I'm at the same place with this one. This is a, a good-looking beer. It 
it looks well in the, good in the glass. It's got a decent head. At least mine had a decent head. It's got a decent smell. So I would definitely go for that. As far as the taste is concerned, it's a good beer, honestly. It's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stick with the uh, seven and a half on the taste on this one as well. Yeah. There are a lot of beers. I would definitely take this over. Yeah. So for me, I'm. this is obviously a little bit more my style. I really like the multi-style beers um, and the yeast-centric type beers, and I'm not as lean towards kind of some of the hoppiness that I know that you enjoy putting it up against the last beer that I had. And I give the last one eight and a half. I like this a little bit better. Do you? Yeah. I think the, the flavor profile is just a little bit better. It has a little bit more maltiness to it in the, in a right way. And it could be because maybe the other ones being subdued because of the higher alcohol levels and the coffee, but, the coffee flavor. and the coffee flavors, which even though I enjoy well, this one also had uh, higher bittering units in it, too. It could be. So there's that balance that's created from the hops. Versus it's a the good balls. balance, yeah. Yeah, and it could be picking up a little bit of that hoppiness to it, just enough bitterness to where maybe the other one was a little bit more sweet. And I would say the other one was more sweet comparative to this one. And I think this has got a good balance. Though I would still lean towards the other one as – would be a great alternative if you're a stout drinker to go ahead and move towards because of that coffee kind of character to it. While this, I would say that if you're a big brown beer, right, brown ale, porter style beer, this is a great one to try. It's got some good I character to it. I would say this beer, if you wanted a break from an IPA, this beer would be an excellent one to have. Because, I mean, to be honest, I love my IPAs, I love my bitter beers, I love my, my hop-flavored beers, but the reality is sometimes I want some, some contrast, you know? You don't always want chocolate ice cream, sometimes you want vanilla, you don't always want a steak, sometimes you want, you know, ham. I mean, it's just the way it is, and this would be a good way to get away from, from those uh, strong hop-flavored beers or even a lot of uh, really strong uh, wheat flavored beers because I'm noticing there's a lot of wheat flavored beers on the market when I go buy all this stuff. So yeah. My overall impression on this beer, I'm going to give this beer actually, uh, we're going to stick with the 7.5. Noticing a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say overall impression. I'm a little bit more impressed with this. So I'm going to, I'm going to bump it up a little bit. I'm going to say about an eight and a quarter. So I'm bumping it up a little bit ahead of the cool beans that we did, even though I thought that was a really good beer as well. I enjoy this much more. I think I would be more likely to have this again. And two beers that call themselves vanilla porters right next to each other, I'm going to choose it over the other one. Really? Yeah. I have figured you'd have gone over the cool beans just yeah. because of between the coffee and that one had a bit more of vanilla to it than this one. I really love the character to it. I love the balance to us. Even though I like beers that lean towards sweet, I think that I'm just so, like you talk about a break from IPA. I'm just not an IPA person. It's just not my style of beer. And I understand <clears throat> there's probably a lot of hate for me because of that. <clears throat> and I'm okay well, with that. because You, you can be wrong, Dave. The I know this won't judge you. I don't have a problem with the fact that people love IPA. I understand why they love IPAs, uh, and I understand why they love the pale ales and the real hoppy beers. It just doesn't – it's not the kind of thing for me. So when I talk about bitterness, I'm really looking for bitterness to be a good balance. I like hops, and I think this is a good use of hops. I think it's not over the top. No, for it's, me, it's very it's well balanced as far as Well balanced. It's still on that kind of sweet side, but it's not overly bitter. I like it. Yeah. For me, uh, the personal preference, I probably was a little bit generous on the Cool Beans one myself because I really don't like the coffee flavor at all. It doesn't do it for me. But this one completely lacks that. And I would say this personal preference, so I'm going to put this one at about a seven. And yeah. it's mainly because I've had some better porters. I've had some worse porters. I've had a lot of worse beers. I've had better beers, but this is a good beer. I'll take this beer over a lot of other beers. And like I said earlier in the video, I, I chose this particular beer 
because I tried their Christmas ale and their Christmas ale was freaking amazing. So if you get a chance to check that out, check it out. Let us know about it. it it's good stuff. This is a great porter. I really enjoy it quite a, quite a lot. Uh, from a personal preference standpoint, porters are one of those kind of styles that I rank fairly high. This kind of beer, um, I'm going to probably, unless it's going to be one of the unique styles, like some of your Belgian styles, one of the warmer styles, your Russian Imperial Stouts, your Baltic Porter, some of those kind of styles that I think that are really just outstanding Yeah, when you have an opportunity to try them like you would want to choose them. I would put this right in with a lot of my go-to kind of beers. Yeah, and this actually wasn't too expensive as a six-pack. Yeah, I mean, I, I see it in... And generally, I'm, I'm someone who would who would easily order a Smithix or a Scottish Ale or, you know, some beer like that kind of style and be completely happy with it. I'm going to put this up there with, with that. And uh, I'm going to basically give it an eight. Really? Um, but like I said, when I look at eight, there's a lot of beers that I'm going to be order, asking if I see it in a list above and beyond. But if I saw this... And I didn't have something that was like a go-to that I normally would grab, like a Scottish Ale or a, like a Smithix or something. You might just decide. I, I wouldn't think twice. I would go to this probably you, over it. You might just look at it and say, eh, I'll take one of those. And yeah. You know, maybe I'll switch, it, switch games later. If I see a porter on the uh, menu, I'm probably going to order it, you know, unless there's something else out there like a Belgian or something that's like really going to like be unique. Uh, sour beer or something like that that I'm going to go ahead and gravitate towards. You know, porters to me are really hit and miss. You know, they're more hit and miss to me than IPAs are. And I'm an IPA drinker, but I've had some IPAs that are just not okay. <laughs> but I, uh, I definitely think that as far as porters are concerned, this is a good one. I've had some porters that were just gross and, you know, I don't know if it's just that way with all beer. You got some that are home runs and you got some that are, you know, strikeouts three freaking pitches in a row. So, yeah, I don't think it's as pretty of a beer as other beers, though. Um, doesn't like to. the brown beers kind of kind of take on a little bit of that note where they're just not as pretty, not as like alluring, but they've got a lot of really great character to it. I mean, some of my favorite do. beers are like. Like nut brown ale. We got to do a dunkel or something next time. I almost picked dunkel up some dunkels. Be, dunkel would be a really great option as well. But I, I think we also uh, ought a teaser for foreshadowing uh, some pilsners. Trying to like eye out the pilsners, but there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of pilsners. Mm -hmm. But I'd really like to hit some pilsners because once again, those beers can be amazing as well. Yeah. Yeah, especially some of the uh, uniquer styles of the Pilsners. So I would love to, uh, I'd love to explore those as well. Well, at any rate, we've uh, jibber jabbed long enough for you. So, cheers! Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you think of this beer. Let us know of any beers you want us to try. Yeah, We're always hey, looking for something. Go out there, give this beer a try. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think of our recommendations of it. Uh, in regards to how you feel about the beer. Hey, even if you think we're a pair of jack-offs, whatever, we're good. Let us know. Cheers.